In this video, we're going to be discussing carburetor float height, how to measure it and how to adjust it. The carburetor I'm using in this video is a Kahin 38mm PWK airstriker short fitted with a stick metering block. Um, details regarding the float height specification will change depending on the carburetor you have. Uh, but the method to uh, measure and adjust the float height will largely be the same. So I guess I should start by explaining what the float does and why the float height is important. Um, if I flip the carburetor over into the normal position, uh, this side attaches to the airbox and this side attaches to the engine. Um, on the side of the carburetor is the fuel um, inlet and uh, so gasoline will flow into here. Inside there's a, a passageway which connects to a uh, needle valve which is controlled by the float. And I should point out that uh, you should be careful not to push down on the float hard or you can damage the uh, needle valve. Um, so when the float is hanging down like this, uh, it will allow uh, gasoline into the float. So I, I've detached the uh, float, float bowl so you can see the float, but uh, the float bowl is underneath the carburetor like this um, and will fill with uh, gasoline when the uh, float is down. When the gasoline reaches a certain, le certain level, uh, the float will float up and close off the uh, needle valve stopping further gasoline. So really the, the purpose of the float is to regulate the level of gasoline inside the uh, float bowl. Here you can see the float bowl and internally it has an overflow tube which is connected to the overflow hose. Um, if you set the float level very high it means gasoline can escape from the overflow tube very easily especially riding over rough ground or if the bike is lent over. Um, also, if the float level is very high um, and you're using a stick, it means the idle circuit can uh, run over rich. Conversely, if you set the um, float level very low um, and you're riding wide open throttle, um, the engine can start running lean and ultimately seize the engine. So it's important to set the float level accurately and not too high and not too low. Okay, so the Kahim factory specification for the float height for this carburetor is 6.5 millimeters. Um, I typically aim for seven millimeters, a little lower, to uh, reduce fuel wastage. Um, but uh, I think anywhere between 6.5 and seven, uh, you could go as low as eight millimeters um, is okay. Um, I don't think you wanna go outside of uh, the 6.5 to eight millimeter range though. So what does that specification mean? Well, the method used to measure float height um, is you lean the carburetor over at 60 degrees, which is approximately what I have it held at now, and you measure from the um, carburetor body here, this surface, to the top of the float. So if, if you're um, using 6.5 millimeter measurement, from here to the top of the float needs to be 6.5 millimeters. Okay, before we do a accurate float height measurement, there's a couple of details I wanna discuss. So the first thing I'm going to do is remove the float and you simply push out this pin and then you can carefully lift off the float. Okay, so now you can see the orifice that the needle valve seats in and it's very important to check in here and make sure there's no debris um, and it's not damaged. Uh, if there's any dirt in here, obviously the needle valve can't seal properly. And even if you set the um, float level correctly, if fuel is leaking, um, you're not gonna have the correct level. So uh, always check in here, especially uh, if you've been using the carburetor for a while. And here you can see the needle valve and the tip is made from rubber and over time it can degrade. So it's a good idea to inspect this and check for damage. As a rule of thumb, um, I would do an inspection once a year and uh, replace it if it's damaged. Another good check to make is to weigh the float. And you can see here it's measuring between 11.1 .1 and 11.2 grams. Um, this is a brand new float, so it's never been in gasoline, so I know it's good. Uh, but if at a later date uh, you started having some issues with the carburetor, uh, you could take the float out, remeasure it, and uh, check it against the, uh, the measurement now. Um, if, for example, it became damaged and started taking on fuel, it would become heavier and that would obviously affect the uh, float level. 
Okay, so in order to do an accurate uh, float height measurement, you need a reference mark. And I like to make a mark on the uh, block body um, on the side. Um, I do this quite often, so I made a uh, spacer um, and I always target seven millimeters. So this is seven mill millimeters thick. I can lay it across the carburetor like this and uh, make a, a mark on the body there. And uh, the bottom of that mark is gonna be seven millimeters. So um, I have a nice accurate uh, measurement. If, you, if you're not doing this often, uh, obviously you're not gonna have a, a tool like that. So what you can do is uh, lay a rule as thin as possible across the carburetor, uh, make one mark um, as your zero reference and then measure up uh, your target. So either 6.5 or seven millimeters up from there. Okay, so now I have my reference mark, I can uh, reinstall the float in the carburetor and slide the pin back in. And be very careful not to uh, force anything. It should slide in very easily if it's uh, aligned correctly. Okay, so the first float level measurement technique I'm gonna show you is a quick and easy uh, approximate method where I move the carburetor body manually and observe the, uh, the float. And you can see here when I have it tilted over a lot, uh, the float can move freely. And as I tilt it back, uh, it will stop moving. So right here, uh, the float is resting on the needle valve and stops moving. And if I tilt it further, it's still the same. And then a bit further, it starts going down further from there. So between about here and about there, it doesn't move. So it's in this uh, region that you want to do your measurement. Um, and if I align it correctly, you can see clearly that uh, the top of the float um, is actually below the reference mark. And because the carburetor is upside down, that means that the uh, float level is set too high. And before this video, I actually intentionally set the uh, float level too high, just so I could show you. Okay, so next is the more accurate method of setting the float height. Um, so I'm using this micrometer stand to hold the carburetor steady. And uh, this is very convenient because you can easily adjust the angle of the carburetor. And the specification is that uh, you need the carburetor at 60 degrees to the uh, work surface. So I've got this handy pr protractor. I've set that to 60 degrees and then I can put it under the edge of the bench and uh, then check the angle of the carburetor is correct. And it, as you can see there, it, it's exactly at 60 degrees. Then you can go ahead and measure the uh, top of the uh, float and compare it to your reference mark there. So you can see that uh, the float is too low and like the previous measurement, uh, you can see uh, the float height is actually uh, too high. So I need to adjust the, uh, the needle valve and uh, correct that. Okay, so to adjust the float height, uh, you need to um, bend this tab. So in my case, the, uh, the float is too high and I need to push this tab down so it contacts the uh, needle valve earlier. Um, so it's really a question of trial and error. Um, it doesn't take much force to, uh, to bend it. So be careful when you do it and uh, do a little bit at a time and do regular measurements. So I've made a slight adjustment there and I'm gonna retest it. Okay, so I'm retesting it now and you can see the, uh, the top of the float is still uh, below the reference mark. So it means the float is still set slightly too high. So I'm gonna to have to do another adjustment and I'm pushing it down a little bit more and I'll retest that. Okay, so I've made a few more measurements and uh, right now you can see the top of the float lines up with the bottom of the reference uh, mark. So it means the float level is set precisely to seven millimeters. Um, one final check before you reassemble the carburetor is to check that the uh, float moves freely and that looks good. Um, if you're unsure of whether the uh, needle valve is sealing or not, there's one easy check you can make. Um, so I've actually attached some hose to the fuel inlet. And if you blow down the end of the hose, um, you can listen uh, for air escaping. Okay, so I'm going to start with the uh, float open, as you can see there. And uh, air should escape when I blow, and you should be able to hear it. And then I'll tilt it back until air stops escaping.
Um, if you can always hear our escaping, it means your uh, needle valve is leaking and needs replacing. So I have seen people use this uh, technique to set the float level. Um, you can do that, but uh, one issue is that uh, you can't compare it directly to the factory specification. So for example, Kehing um, specifies 6.5 millimeters. If you use this method, uh, it's gonna uh, give a, a different result. Uh, as I say, that's not to say you can't use it, but uh, your reference is gonna be different from the uh, factory reference. Okay, so that's the float level measurement and adjustment complete. Uh, if you follow these steps and are careful, uh, you can be confident that you're not gonna have any float level related issues while out riding. I do recommend that uh, you check at regular periods the float level, um, I'd say at least once a year, um, just to ensure that uh, your riding's trouble free.